observe. I want to thank you people very much for coming. And uh, I want to remove that serious face of Magoha so that you know the other side of Magoha. <laughs> exactly one month after we met, he started telling people we are going to get married. <laughs> and that was the first time we had a quarrel. I said, how can you do that? He said, no, I know you will not accept because I'm not a Nigerian. So you go and tell them why you can't marry me. <laughs> So when we continued, got married, when I was pregnant with my son, I was in between life and death with my blood pressure. He told me if this is what pregnancy is all about, this is closed, this case is closed. <laughs> and uh, when I had my son because of the blood pressure and everything, I didn't have any milk. You can't imagine by 6.30, I had two liters of fruit juice, squeezed by him every morning before going to work. And the others used to say, ah, what type of a man is this? Considering the fact that he was not a Nigerian, that's a story for another day. Those days, we Nigerians, marrying from the same village was the norm because somehow we were never related. So to hear that I left the village, left the town, left the county, those days we still call them uh, uh, what states, we call them states. Left the other states, left the whole of Nigeria. It was like, you're crazy. Everybody said, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? In fact, uh, there was this slang that what's, what is there in Sokoto is there in Shokoto. <laughs> Sokoto is the farthest point uh, in northwest of Nigeria. Shokoto. Written the same way, but pronounced S O K O T O. Shokoto means trouser in Yoruba language. So they say, What you are looking for so far away is here. Well, where are you? <laughs> say, ah, what did they say? Another day, I'll tell you why his closeness to my mom was so strong that when my mom passed on, it was like he had lost a part of him. He almost broke down in church. Then, another incident was when I, I had a near-fatal accident. 24 years ago, when I was coming back from a delivery. I had a head-on collision, and my car turned back to we facing where I was coming from. And some people from, it was around 2 a.m., Holy Thursday, and the people came out from the one of the men, they told me, I know you, I'm going to save you. Where do you want to go to? I said, take me to Nairobi Hospital. When I arrived there, the student there all said, you were my teacher. I said, now I know I'm in safe hands. So I now opened my handbag, because all along I held my handbag to my side. <laughs> I opened my handbag, I called him, I said, I have an accident. I'm okay, I'm here. And the first thing he said when he came and saw me was, I want you alive with or without your leg. And I answered him, I told him, no, nah, I'm alive, number one. Number two, the leg has no permission to go anywhere. <laughs> I will come back, my, my legs will come back together, and I will go back to my high heels. Apparently, nobody had ever seen me without high heels. So it was something difficult for people to accept. Even my patients would just come to see, do you have your high heels on? <laughs> So he 